In the times that I've been around her, I've just been impressed with um, not only her background, but the way she carries herself and uh, how she can blend into a room, uh, but still garners respect. And trying to bring a group of people together. I think I do that really well. I've, I've been involved in coaching basketball. I coached for 36 years, and I think one of my strengths was uh, pulling people together and having them work hard for a common goal and trying to meld different personnel. My high school coach contacted me at one point and said, I think you should think about coaching. No way, you know, there's no way I'd want to be a coach. Um, but then I loved competing. I was very, very, very competitive as an athlete. And um, as I started thinking about it a little bit more, uh, after I finished junior college, I had the president of the college actually contact me and ask me if I would come back and start coaching a women's basketball program, which we didn't have any women's sports at the college at that time. And uh, so I said, okay, I'll give it a shot and here, however many, 45 years later. <laughs> I got into basketball mainly because the president of the junior college asked me to start the program. I didn't know anything about basketball. I'd never played. Um, I can remember being in the kitchen with my husband and saying, okay, if the refrigerator is the defender and I'm the offensive player and they're to set a pick, where would the pick go? You know, that kind of thing. I mean, I really didn't know anything about basketball. Uh, I remember meeting with the junior college president, the NJCAA president, and he said, if you have a chance to go far in anything, take basketball. He gave me that bit of advice and I kind of hung on to it and stayed with basketball. The challenges are always different at every level, but at the junior college, biggest challenge is just recruiting a, almost a new team every year. So uh, I was at Cali at Community College for 17 years, and towards the last maybe five years that I was there, I really had a desire to coach players longer. Uh, it seemed like at the end of two years, you kind of have them right where you wanted them, and boom, they were off someplace else. And uh, so that was probably the biggest challenge at the community college level. At Wichita State in the, um, I was here 89 to 98. I would say recruiting again was really difficult for, uh, we didn't have the arena like we have now. We had an arena, but not a really nice, beautiful place like it is now. Um, it, it was more known as a real urban university with no real dorms on campus. You know, it was more of a commuter type of a campus. That was the, the rep that Wichita State had 20 years ago. And, um, and that was more difficult, I think, to recruit, especially the traditional high school student in. A lot of times your decisions are dictated by resources that you have available. Today we're here to introduce our fourth and eighth women's head basketball coach, Linda Hargrove. Well, I love Wichita State, and uh, I invested nine years of my life here trying to build a program, and uh, um, I just wanted to do what I could to help. The biggest difference, I think, in the last 20 years with the player that it, the player is just the way they communicate and the way they interact. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with social media, with the, uh, with the selfie stick, with, you know, they, they, I think players are way more into themselves than they were 20 years ago. Uh, and that's not every player, but I just, and, and, I, and it's not just players, it's everybody, you know, it's just the, the way in which uh, people are growing up now. My grandkids are the same way. I mean, they, they, they don't necessarily sit and talk to you all the time like, like we did 20 years ago. We communicated verbally then, and now we do a lot through text. We do a lot through 
email it kind of became even obsolete now. And um, um, I know I've talked to coaches, and, and I didn't recruit any this year for WSU. That wasn't part of my responsibility when I came in here. But I've talked to a lot of my former professional players who are now coaching, and they talk about how you can't even call a recruit. They don't pick up the phone, and you can't even really email them. But if you Snapchat them, boom, they're there, you know, immediately. So learning how to communicate with athletes uh, today is probably a big challenge for a lot of coaches. Um, uh, and, and I think that there, if there is a difference in players, it's probably that. Um, just being more into themselves, and maybe it's more difficult for them to think in terms of team and how to work together. And, and when you're playing a team sport, there's kind of a conflict there, so you have to figure it out. You had to order videotape. I mean, we would order uh, videotape if we were getting ready to play Missouri State, and you had to think ahead because you had to have it overnighted to you, that tape, and then you'd get it the next day, and then you'd start breaking it down, and you would have to, and, and we didn't have a, a GA or, you know, some, a, a coach specifically that would be breaking down film and putting an offense and defensive tape together and inbounds. You would, as a head coach, go through and you would be doing it all. And uh, it's very, very, very time consuming. And I think we lost a lot of coaches, really good coaches early on uh, because of the time commitment that it would take. You would just spend hours and hours and hours looking at videotape. I think scouting is way more detailed now than it was then, basically because you have a lot of tools at your disposal to help make it easier to put together. When I was here at first, I mean, basically, we drove, we took a bus pretty much everywhere we went. So, um, yeah, the first time I said, oh, we're going to charter to wherever, <laughs> I'm going, Indiana State, we're chartering, <laughs> chartering to Indiana State. And, and um, yeah, so that, that whole thing is way easier than it used to be. Um, but, you know, there were a lot of advantages to that, too. I think that's when you really bonded as a team, when you're on a bus for 10 hours. And, uh, you know, you, you maybe you give up some things when you have it nicer and you have a quicker turnaround when you can go from here to there in an hour and a half instead of 10 hours. I didn't notice a lot of difference between the first time when I coached here and this time in terms of the fan support. The one thing that the players did that I thought was really nice that we never did was just running around the court at the end of the game and, and uh, talking to the fans. I thought that was really a, a nice touch and we never did that before. But um, as far as just a, a real core group of women's basketball fans, I think they were here 20 years ago. They're, they might have changed a little bit. But I do think that there's a hunger for this program to be really good and and the crazy thing is it has been really good you know in the last uh, five years I mean winning three Valley Championships in a row and I don't know that the fan base increased dramatically during that time I think most people thought it would and um, you know I think it's always been around 2,500 fans or something like that so um, I think that's a challenge uh, for for Wichita State, I mean, I think volleyball has gotten a really good following, and obviously men's basketball is huge here, and, and I, think, uh, I think women's basketball can be as well. I think you can't ever take the sport out because that's obviously a big part of it, and winning is always a big part of that because coaches aren't going to keep their jobs if they don't win. So you have to factor all of that in, but I think uh, uh, I think a really good coach is somebody who can motivate players to be their best, that can help teach them uh, and help bring out their weaknesses and help them improve on their weaknesses during the time that they're here. Uh, somebody that can mold a group into a team, uh, a group of people who are willing to sacrifice individual stats for the best of the team. And so you've got to find a way to just mold it all together and make it work. And I think the best coaches are those that are able to do that.